Are you a prepper or homesteader looking to connect with like-minded people in your area? Looking to start your own preparedness group? Already have a group? Well, look no further than PrepperNet. PrepperNet is dedicated to personal responsibility, individual freedoms, and being self-reliant. PrepperNet has monthly meetings in over 100 cities where you can meet and learn with like-minded people in your area. PrepperNet, where preppers unite. Find us online at PrepperNet.com. You've just joined the Prepper Broadcasting Network, where we promote self-reliance and independence. The views and opinions expressed are strictly those of the host or their guests. Visit us in the interactive chat room at PrepperBroadcasting.com. Survive. Thrive. Stay alive. It's time to get prepared with the Prepping Academy Podcast. Land of the United States. Hey, Timothy here, and do you like that me? <clears throat> no, you don't sound like that. No, no, you don't. We're here to. No, I, okay. yeah, I can't. <laughs> I, one of my clients, I it's F F N Manufacturing, which they make arms. Okay. Like battle nice? battle rifles, like oh, oh. I mean major major oh, weapons. weapons for <laughs> for the government. And if you call, it's cool. Just call their answer their their number, because it's a guy with a raspy voice. Things are calling, and then <laughs> manufacturing, <laughs> the leading world lead. I mean, you're like, dude, he just sounds bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and smoking cigarettes. Yeah. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to the Prepping Academy. I am Forrest. We got Tender Foot. You know, one time I actually put your name. And it went uncorrected until we found someone saw it as tender food. Because <laughs> <laughs> it the spell correct didn't. But um, we got tender foot here. Um, we're coming to you live on um, always on Monday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hey, if you're just joining us and you saw us, you know, come up on Block Talk Radio, because what did the you know they'll have oh live now. If and if you're one of the people and you clicked on it and now you're listening to our show. We invite you to come over to, um, it's called um, prepping, um, PrepperBroadcasting.com, PrepperBroadcasting.com, because we have an interactive chat room there, and you can listen to us there, and uh, there's uh, there's thousands of people in the chat room right now. I'm using a multiple of a thousand here. <laughs> <laughs> Come on over, join the chat room. Tonight's going to be an interesting subject. Um, and you can also follow us on PreppingAcademy.com. Prepping, that's with the I-N-G, PreppingAcademy.com. <laughs> um, and you can follow us there. You can join our mailing list. You can um, see my bio. Oh, I don't have a bio of you on there. That's okay. Well, because you, you're still like, you're still in the interviewing process. That's it. So, so first of all, before we get yeah. to, um, well, I do want to mention this though. Yeah. Okay, just a few minutes. I, I was kind of telling Tenderfoot how our numbers, you know, they're going up and everything. He goes, "Really? I, I bring that much value and, you know, to the show that your numbers are are going up and listenership." And I'm like, "No." <laughs> I, took, I took it as you were complimenting me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. <laughs> I just didn't. I do want to give a shout out, and tonight's broadcast is free to all veterans. There you go. Awesome. Because of Veterans Day, so yes. we're going. To, you can listen totally free tonight. You know, restaurants give away free food, yes. or you know, Dunkin' Donuts give a donut or something. So tonight, our podcast, and for this point on, if you're a veteran, you can listen to our podcast totally free. There you go. You're so generous. I know. But I do, hey, happy Veterans Day because you're a veteran with yes. the U.S. Navy. That's right. And you are with the U.S., what's that thing called? Yeah. Air Force. It, yeah. We call them brainiacs, but you can yeah. call them, yeah, you can call us Air Force. Oh, <laughs> uh, man, look, thank you for your service. Thank you for yours. You know, we give each other a hard time. That's only because the Navy's better. But, well, yeah. you know. <laughs> oh, goodness, the Navy. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, what was it? The ab- ASPAS? What's the test you take? ASPAS. ASPAS. It's yes. just because you couldn't score high enough is the only reason you went in the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go all night with I know. <laughs> but uh did you go out and participate in any freebies? Um no, I don't I don't think I, I don't think I did. I I tell you what, I, I've been working on the house a lot lately. Uh-huh. And uh both Lowe's and Home Depot, um, every day. Ten percent. Ten percent. Um so uh I do like going to places that um and now that you're a senior citizen. Got my coffee. <laughs> no, but it, I mean, it is. I, I use it all the time. Every time I go, it, now yeah. it's on my, my Lowe's card or whatever it's called. Yeah. Or your Home Depot card. It automatically is 10%. That's right. That's awesome. Really? But usually I'll go out and call some veterans. Did we go out last year together? No. We did. We did. Yeah. Me and you went out last year. Yeah. And ate. Man, we, we went in several places. That was a good day. Oh, yeah, because we went and got dessert or something. Didn't yeah, we did. A I think blizzard. we did two lunches. <laughs> <laughs> I think we did everything short. Of Are you sure? We did breakfast or something. I don't know. Yeah, we, we, like, yeah we met early. We and Yeah, we just kind of hung out. Um, but this year, I didn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, nothing. I mean, usually I make it a tradition to go get my oil changed because usually Jiffy Lube yeah. gives a free. And I didn't see that this year, and I didn't have time. Yeah. What they had, it, it was. It was crazy, um, I guess, the way it fell. But, but you know, what is cool about doing that is we get to meet other veterans while we're there. Right. Like we did last time. Yes. And we got to meet some uh, war heroes. And, and yeah, it's just always awesome. cool. Yeah. You, know, and that, you know, I'm a veteran, but I always thought that I got more out of the military than the military got out of me. Because I grew yeah. up. I mean, I literally grew up. I was a young punk kid. Yeah. When I went in, when I came out, I was a fighting, killing soldier. There you go. In the Air Force. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, you didn't think that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so anyway, happy Veterans Day to everyone. Um, and uh, so tonight's top t- topic is bug out location. Yeah. I love this topic. Yeah, this is a great topic. Um, I'm glad I, I thought of it. I, I write about uh, yeah, yeah. You've yet to come up with a topic. You're like I don't know. And by the time you think for four days, I have to come up with a topic and write it. And but bug out location. I write, speak, I talk about and consult on this very topic a lot. Yeah, you did. And so you said that during this podcast that, <laughs> that you were going to be the funny guy, which is actually funny that you would say that. <laughs> that you think you're funny because <laughs> that's me. Uh. Yes, that is you. Yeah, you, know, you are funny. What, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget your date, <laughs> December 11th. Oh, nice. You're coming out of closet date. So, no. <laughs> <clears throat> so tonight we're going to talk about um, bug out location and all kind of aspects of it. But there is a great book that uh, it's kind of like the only book I've ever read on getting information on where bug out locations what states are better, what counties, down to the city level. I mean, it's a thick old book, and it costs a lot of money. Um, I happen to have a copy of it. I mean, I happen to have it. And it is called Strategic Relocation. And that, um, and it breaks it down. It has maps in there of, like, military targets, which the software I created also has that as well. We'll go over that as well. Yep. But it's a good book. But the problem is, here's the problem. What's the problem? You only need one state. And it's got like 400 pages. And if you could go and just rip out where your location is going to be, that's all you need. You don't give a hoot if Utah is a great place to go bug out because you're in North Carolina. (laughs) You know what I mean? You're paying for all this information that you're not going to use any of it. It's kind of like the dictionary. You look at what? 500 <laughs> words in your life in there, and there's 20,000. <laughs> you really need all those words. <laughs> you really you <laughs> just need the ones that you're going to use. And here's the crazy thing about the dictionary uh-huh. they're always adding words every year. So you're right. You don't yeah. really need it. Well, now we got the internet, it's That's free. It. That's it. Poor old Webster. Until his, we break it. His whole lineage, or whatever you call it, of inheritance, they're all going to just. Lose all their money now. But bug out locations. So now we are in the P 
Piedmont of the Carolinas. That's yeah. where we're located. Mm-hmm. So if you're in California, don't come this way because it's not going to be good. I mean, you know, you need to kind of bug out near where you are. Now, if you read the book Patriots, which you didn't, did you? By Rollins? Yeah. yeah. There was actually a family in there, I think coming from North Carolina, going all the way over to where the redoubt is. And it took them forever. So one of the things we're gonna we're gonna talk about kind of the the things, but and bug out. And I've got something in the end that's a bonus, and All it's right. free to everyone, not just veterans. Okay. Awesome. And it's gonna I'm gonna give you some some ways you can create your own bug out location for like zero money to a very little money. Oh, awesome. And it's interesting, and. It's creative, but we'll get to that at the very end. So if you don't, if you don't stay around, and you don't get to hear it. Yep. <laughs> so I have, I would say like eight or nine important things about a great location, but dumb me, I lettered them. <laughs> so I, so I have A through like I. <laughs> so I, I don't know how many that is. So, so you got A through C. Go all the way to I right there, and they're not in the order either because I was adding them. So the first one though is what, what does it say? I cannot read upside down. Location, location, location. There you go. That is the most important thing about a bug out location, wouldn't you think? Very. <clears throat> and so some of the things I put under that is travel distance to a bug out location. Oh wait, before we get into this. Let's step back just one step because <clears throat> to all my friends out there that say they're going to bug in, I think you need to do some research and find out how many homes are around you. In my old, old location where I lived in the city, yeah. I had 1,100 homes within one mile of me. Right. That's taken a, a circle completely around my house. That's 1,100 homes. Yeah, you're if you bug in, you're bugging in to die. That's like deciding you're going to die yeah. if it's a major crap hit the fan. And you can do just that information on those real estate sites. Oh yeah, you, before. you can do all kinds of searches on that. Um, but so I am a big bug out guy, and my bug out's different than most people's bug out because. Um, but you just got to get away from population. I mean, do you not read these books that are made up? I mean, seriously. Hey, let's take a quick break. Are you a prepper or homesteader looking to connect with like-minded people in your area? Looking to start your own preparedness group? Already have a group? Well, look no further than PrepperNet. PrepperNet is dedicated to personal responsibility, individual freedoms, and being self-reliant. PrepperNet has monthly meetings in over 100 cities where you can meet and learn with like-minded people in your area. PrepperNet, where preppers unite. Find us online at PrepperNet.com. <laughs> they all die in the city. <laughs> okay, first one is travel distance, because that's important. I'm not a big EMP guy, meaning I'm just not sure it's going to happen. Um, any other thing that happens, any other thing, any, let me any other thing that happens except the EMP or CME, I think you'll have 24 hours before people panic. Yeah, I'll give you that. Because people have so much faith in our government, in the United States, and the way we have we, – we're just a land of prosperity. They think we can overcome things. I've said this several times. If New York – Chicago, L.A., Dallas, Miami, if they're bombed with nuclear bombs tonight, 99% of the Americans tomorrow would go to work. Yeah. They, because, one, they need that paycheck. Two is they're going to go back to help America build back and come get back strong. Yeah. They're, I mean, so, and that gives, I think, it, that's kind of the worst case scenario for me if North Korea 
drops a couple over. I don't think they have an EMP, but that's kind of the worst case. And I still think I could go to, I could go to the U-Haul, rent a U-Haul. Yeah. Hire some guys to come pack my things that I want to take. Um, go eat at IHOP or my last meal or whatever <laughs> before I bug out. Be where you check. <laughs> I, well, right. I'm meeting someone for breakfast tomorrow, and IHOP is one on the list. And then I can drive to my my um, bug out location, and it all be good. I think I'll have that much time. Okay, but location, I mean distance, it has to be close. Yeah. So what? How? What's close and what's too far? What do I think close to far? Well, I, I think it depends, uh, one, where your already current location mm-hmm. is, right? And uh, what routes you have planned. Is this something that you are planning? If you're planning EMP, you better be planning to walk. Right. Um, and so I think I think a lot of that uh, goes into play there. Okay. And walking distance, you, most like – Next door. <laughs> Fridge. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so with a two hour drive, is that out of the question? Three hour drive? Um, no, I don't think it is out of the question. Okay. I mean, if you do walk, it's going to take forever to get there. Because North Carolina, you're dealing with a longer stay. Uh, I don't even know from many of Murphy. How many hours is that? Uh, seven, six seven, hours. seven or more. Seven? Okay. It yeah. takes me five hours to get to the coast. From here? Mm-hmm. What part? Well, that's Kitty Hawk. Okay. Well, yeah, the Outer Banks. Yeah. Outer Banks. Okay. So, but, um, and that's driving the speed limit because I never speed. Yeah. <laughs> so, a couple other things is not only distance, um, but how far the location is away from population. Right? You don't want to yeah. bug out from Charlotte and go to Raleigh. No. You're not improving your chances of survival. Going the wrong way. You don't want to, even Asheville. I mean, you just don't want to go to a, a populated city. You want to go and hide. Let us be real. What if you've got um, people a part of, like I know the answer. I'm not my answer to this. But if you've got people that um, you're going to bug out with or someone in your family or whatever, do you go, let's say if it's in the mountains. But they're in Raleigh. We're here in Charlotte, right? Do you go to Raleigh and then go? No, to everyone's Raleigh? on their own. Everybody's on their own. Even the yep. even the people within my group, which we call the golden ticket, meaning they're not part of the planning, they're not part of any decision making, but they're invited to our retreat because um, if they're not there, like my my wife's parents. If they're not there, my wife will be useless on the retreat. But we're not going to go get them. They have to get there on their own. Get there, you know. So right. another thing is also, okay, where is your bug out location? Is it um, is it um, got fair weather? What's the climate? What's the growing season? So if you were in New Jersey, you might want to come south. You know what I mean? If you were in Michigan, you might not want to go to Canada. Because, and the reason I say this is because the further you go, the, the extremes of weather, the more energy it takes. Yeah, but and going to Canada. Less gotta, people, though. Yeah. But you also got to cross borders, so you got to deal with those yeah. things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what are you carrying with you? Right. You're not going to get past the border. You know? So you want isolation in a good climate that you can survive in. That's kind of my two cents. Um, that's possible and not very many states. <laughs> I mean, it's just not. Yeah. Um, you pull up a map of North Carolina and you start expanding out. There's, there's very little just except in the mountains, very little in the mountains, and then you are a national park. Other than that, man, it's almost, it's almost developed with farmland or something. You know? Yeah. So um, it's tough. So mm-hmm. next is I have um you have to have water. And I just got an email. Mm-hmm. Um <laughs> you gotta have water. Um and you gotta be able to be self reliant. So if you can't grow food, if you're going to the desert and you have water because there's a lake there, but if you can't grow food and be self reliant, 
So, so we're gonna go through these quickly, kind of. Yes. Okay. And um, and we're gonna we're coming up to a break here in a few minutes. Um, so that was D is you got to be able to defend it, right? Yes. There you go again. You looked at the screen. Yeah. And boom. You're just chilled out, just totally focused um, on that. Well, I thought you were going to keep talking, and I'm trying to read. <laughs> but you got, okay, got to be able to defend it. Um, and um, you got to um, take in the fact how much it cost. Yes. Not um, everybody can afford, you know, five acres of land in the mountains of North Carolina where it's 6000 to $11,000 an acre. Yeah. This is all part of your your planning stage to mm-hmm. where you're going to choose your location. And you got to look at restrictions. You remember you remember the piece of property I almost purchased. Yes. Um, Sixteen acres it had a waterfall, beautiful. Um, had even a, a structure on it, and they had restrictions. Yeah, because it was my place. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it had restrictions, and um, just wasn't. Who wants to? I mean, who knew that that was even in a neighborhood? Yeah. Sixteen acres with a neighborhood covenant—that's crazy. F then and then G G. Oh G, natural threat potential. So yeah. maybe Miami, not just for the 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 sheer number of people, but there's hurricanes that come through there all the time. Yeah, there's a lot. And when there's a grid down, you might not know there's a hurricane actually coming. <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> that could be bad. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, the the winter of the season, <clears throat> the severity of of each uh, season. You know, North Carolina is a great place, but in the mountains, it can get really cold, even here in North Carolina. Oh yeah, it does. Oh yeah. And the once you pass the the, uh, uh, the we had the. Um, the continental divide in the mountains where all the water on one side of the mountains goes to the east coast, the, the other side. I mean, that's the highest ridge. And if you're anywhere near that, I mean, it's, you're at four, 5,000 feet. Yeah. Elevation. Yeah. That's, that's kind of high. It is. So yeah, then the next one is nuclear risk. Oh. I'll tell, you that, I'll tell you this right now. For those that live in South Carolina, there is no safe place. Yeah. Plain and simple. There for if you're worried about nuclear risk in South Carolina, there's absolutely zero place you can go and be safe. And and with that 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 is just uh nuclear reactors. Is that, yes, is that correct? That's nuclear power plants. So you gotta think that if you're if you're planning for the worst, you got to think that these some of these plants aren't going to make it. People yeah. are going to show up to work. The power's going to be off. They can't generate their own power. Mm-hmm. Um, you just got to be concerned about that. And, and you got you know when you're when you're talking about that, uh, me being a Navy guy, one of the things I also think about and I consider is it's not just a power plant, but hey, our ships are powered. Nuclear power. No, no cussing. <laughs> oh, ships. Ships. Okay. You know, my wife says the same thing. Like, you really need to stretch your, your peas. <laughs> I should. But look at this. I have a I have a software program that allows me to map prisons, um, hospitals, nuclear interest, power plants, um, military military interest. Um, in South Carolina, if you look at South Carolina here, see the lines here. It's just, and the only place in North Carolina that's kind of safe is the is the mountains. Is our place? Yep, the mountains, and maybe <laughs> maybe the coast as well. Yeah. Our place? Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> we don't have a place together. You're the first person I'm going to shoot. Yes, <laughs> that's awesome. Okay, I. What comes after I? Actually, I skipped H. Um, how long you plan on staying is also this important. It's so funny that you did this by letter. <laughs> if you look at a sheet, they're not in order. They're just not. Days over here. Like, well, I left room because I'm like, I know I'm going to think of something more important than I'm going to have to put in there. And so they are all over the board, and G stuck over here to the side. And so, um, nice. 
I don't think there's a J though. <laughs> I think I am finished with that. Yeah, so I'll just go through here. Forget the um oh, we just got reminded by our uh, producer G Man, the owner of Prepper Broadcasting Network. Um that hey, it's time um break soon. Um so we're gonna take a quick break. G Man's probably ready in studio and we'll be right back with the Prepping Academy. You're listening to the Prepping Academy, the information you need before the world ends. Do not buy emergency food until you compare legacy food storage. You already know you need an emergency food supply. Legacy wants to ensure that you get higher quality, longer shelf life, better tasting non-GMO freeze-dried food, and Legacy gives you up to double food for your money. There's a huge secret our competitors don't want you to know. Never compare food storage based on cost per serving because serving sizes vary. Compare based on the weight of the food. Legacy gives up to double the food for your budget. Visit LegacyFoodStorage.com. That's LegacyFoodStorage.com. Use coupon code PREPPER to save 15% on your order. Hi, this is Ron Paul. I am a former congressman, physician, and presidential candidate. The world is in turmoil. Things like Ebola, earthquakes, wars, and famines are commonplace. As Americans, we are largely sheltered from these events. However, in parts of the world, just having enough food is a huge problem. For some of us, there is the nagging thought that we may not always have it so good. So we keep some food on hand just in case. My family and I have found a product that helps us do this better. It's a home freeze dryer from Harvest Right. With it, we eat healthier and store a little more food. We freeze dry everything we love to eat, and it lasts up to 25 years. Who knows what the future will bring? One thing's certain, my family and I will always have food on the table. To learn more, go to HarvestRight.com or call 800-923-9591. That's HarvestRight.com or 800-923-9591. Thanks for joining the Prepping Academy. The information you need before the world ends. Before the world ends. Yeah, my voice ends. This is the information you need before the world ends. That's it. See, and I, I, I was playing around when I told you I did that, and you're like, no, that's just like you. You would say that. Yes. Yes. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Okay. So we were going through the list, and you had a couple comments, you said. Well, yeah. You know, going back to the nuclear risk, not only, you know, it, nuclear reactors, not even on a ship, you know, we were talking about those things, but also if, um, is the location that you're looking at, uh, a high risk to be attack, a uh, nuclear attack, um, even. So let's go to, to that level. Uh, you know, so that is something to keep in mind, mm-hmm. um, when you're doing that. So good point. Um, because let's, if you live in Philadelphia, Oh, no, let's take another example, because I said all of South Carolina is hosed okay. with nuclear plants. Okay. So if you look at the map and you, you do a 60-mile radius of um, the nuclear plant, and then you, in, especially in South Carolina, and then you do this l- circle going up northeast, because that's where the nuclear wind, I mean, the wind is going to take all that radiation away from like the mountains of South Carolina, they're going to blow right through Asheville and Charlotte. Hmm. Even, even though it's several hundred miles away, that the wind, just the just natural wind is going to take a lot of this stuff. So if you look at, um, what's the one in Japan? What was that called? Fumish. Oh, without me saying a bad word. Maybe yeah. Yes. Yeah. Ship without people thinking I'm no, saying a bad yeah, word. Yeah. <laughs> but, but that one, the winds there went northwest, and it literally everything northwest, it was is dead by like a hundred miles, because it, the winds took all the radiation, and um, blew the particles up that way. So anyway, so quickly location, water, yeah, and water with nuclear sorry. Well, nuclear you know yeah. I don't want to tell people how where my location is is the perfect in the world. In a sense, it's in Georgia. It's just a great place. 
<laughs> Actually, it's Hawaii. <laughs> oh man, mine was in South Carolina. I'm so playing mine's just dampered. We have Scooby Gear. <laughs> <laughs> See, I have a rocket. I'm going into space. Yeah, you asked me that question, okay, people? <laughs> <laughs> we got to rethink this co-host thing <laughs> because he goes, dude, what if you're in outer space? If an EMP hits and it, you know, destroys everything on Earth. You'll be in outer space. I'm like, for I'm one, <laughs> who wants to survive in outer space by yourself? <laughs> two, two is, how are you going to renew your resources? Did you ever see that movie, uh, The Martian? Yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and three, how are you going to come up with $600 million to get to outer space? <laughs> or are you just going to get a container ship and just settle it up real good? <laughs> That's it. The Enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! That was one of the. I mean, you're a smart guy, you are, but that was one of the <laughs> dumbest things. And then you said you talk, thought about this in the shower, and I'm like, oh, that's way too much information. Yeah, see now you're not supposed to give them all that. <laughs> <laughs> I hope your wife's listening. We talked about it last time. She goes, you talked about me or something. I'm, I forgot what we talked about. I don't know. I don't know. It's only good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now back to my notes, and I'm still looking for your notes. You, you must remember all yours. <laughs> well, you, took, you took my notes. These are mine right here. Oh, whatever. <laughs> so I guess we've kind of discussed that. This is um, this is from the book, and it goes through, you know. But we'll, we'll talk about. Oh, so here I am currently looking at a map that y'all cannot see. That you cannot see of a nuclear power plant north of Charlotte. And the government says 60 miles, you need to stand. If that thing is, they're going to actually evacuate 60 miles of this nuclear plant if it starts to melt down. Okay. Now, is this including wind or no wind? This is, this is not including wind. Of, this is just the radius. Look at that. That's huge. That's a huge area. It's going, uh, well, those who know the North Carolina area, it's going from Charlotte all the way out into the Gaffney, Shelby area. Um, which is uh, to the west and then to the east, uh, well beyond Concord. almost to Winston Salem. Yeah, and and past um, almost to and um, into South Carolina. Yeah, almost up to um, North Wilkesboro. It's huge. Yeah, I mean that's just a long. That's a big area. So and this is fifty miles. You need to add ten more to that because the government changed it to ten. I mean ten to sixty <laughs> now. Yeah, that's crazy. So anyway. That is a threat, um, again. So, I'm going to tell you how to look for land and bug out locations. We're not going to get to my secret until the end, though. Okay. And now, you know, at, at the beginning, we were talking about the bug in people, and... Um, They're going to die. Yeah. <laughs> and this is, uh, you know, for you guys who are listening, and maybe this is new for you, it's, it's even new for me, and... Force and I have been talking about this for, for a long time. I started off as the bugging mm -hmm. type guy. Uh, wanted to do bug out. Didn't know how to do it. Um, thanks to Forrest, I've learned a lot um, to be able to do that. Uh, and that's something that we're in the works. And I'm fortunate I'm doing that with my family. And, oh, yeah. And we talked about that before. But uh, so, yeah, you know, you know, listen up, and this might be for you, uh, like it was for me, and in, in, in the process now, of doing it. I have a friend, uh, um, two of my friends from CPN, and one of them is a major bug in guy because he's building a homestead. I just think the homestead's a little bit too close to um, your yeah. bug. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one of my friend, I, um, he's talking now. <laughs> yeah, he's in the chat room. Talking smack about you. Yeah, I know. So, right? so um, <laughs> how to look for land? Now, I'm, I've got like three ideas on how to look for land. Um, and then my special sauce, my special thing is at the very end, not of this, but another section here. But is um, if you're going to go buy land, whatever you do, don't let it. Don't. You need to find a. The best way to buy land is to have family members. Or friends in the area look for you, so it's not suspicious. Because these city folks, because I am from the mountains of North Carolina, 
these city folks actually think that they're going to go up to my county where I'm from and buy some land and build a bug out location there. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that. <laughs> fantasy football. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't watch NFL anymore. I don't know why I even got that. But but they don't understand that when you go up there, that these people will not trust them. Yeah. They'll destroy anyone that's up there with a retreat or land that they don't know. They will come and destroy you when the when the crap hits the fan. They will. Period. If they don't know and trust you, you first ask questions later. They will just absolutely because what they're going to do first is make their neighborhoods and their land safe, and they don't know you. And they're going to destroy you and take what you've got. That's going to happen throughout the mountains of North Carolina. And people just don't understand that. A way around that is, two ways, is go out there and be part of the community. So when you buy land, I would I would go to a realtor like realtor, realty.com, which is a sponsor of the show. You call John up and say, I'm looking for land. He knows exactly what you're looking for because he specializes in helping preppers find land. And then he can also help you with the community. So you go up there and you get part of the community. You go, you buy neighbors things. You give them some food that you grew. You share things. You become family. If you're not, I'm telling you, you go up to some of them counties and they will just, as soon as something happens, they're going to, you're their first issue and they're going to take care of it and there are there are hundreds if not thousands of people that have land up there that are city folks in in the charlotte or raleigh or greensboro area i'm telling you they don't know what's coming because i know the people up there and they're not going to be secure if they they see there's a vacation house you know a mile down the road and they they never met that person that's the problem for them that's the security risk. Yeah. It just is. So anyway, okay. so you're going to need to find family and friends or go out there and be part of the community. Second is a realtor like John at Retreat Realty in the, in the mountains of North Carolina. The third is you can do the land and, um, you know, land for far, land and farm, land watch, land of America. But gosh, you got to have a good realtor. Because yeah. all these realtors are local. Okay, so if you're let's say you're looking in the mountains of South Carolina and you find a, you find a piece of land you want to go see, you call this real this real estate agent and you go, hey, I want to buy some land, and you're gonna go on the land, you're gonna be talking to him. He's going, so what do you want this land for? Oh, just a oh a vacation home. Okay, well he goes and tells everyone, hey, we had this guy come up from Greenville, South Carolina, looking at this land. So he's going, and all of a sudden that word gets out. So you've got to work with a realtor that will not get that information out and share it. Gotcha. I'm a genius. You are. <laughs> no, I actually planned. I, ta- I I mean, I wrote notes down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, go ahead. So um, when you are bugging out to this location, um, you you you. Things work out for you. You actually get a bug out location. You eventually become a bug in person. Oh yes, that's the goal is to be able to go to a place that you you already have livestock, you already have chickens, you already have all your preps. You have everything there. You're part of the community. You can still live in the city, but you've got to go up there monthly and and visit and take care of your land and let these people know. And go to events up there so they know who you are. Yeah, so so you're saying with this, with your bug out, um, this is when you also have to practice. Um, so you need to know how to bug out, but you also take the time to practice. And in that practicing, going out to your location, preparing it and stuff, be a part of the community. Right. And we've said that a lot of times even where we are now. Right. Be a part of the community. Got to be a part of the community, especially up there, because if you're not – you're an unknown threat to them. Yep. But keep this in mind. When you're bugging out to this location, you can't be but involved in one or two communities, maybe three. Mm-hmm. But on your route, 
that needs to be what Forrest is saying right now, that needs to be kept in mind too, because you may run into going through another place. Well, that's why I think you'll we'll have time. I okay. think you have time to drive three hours before people start freaking out and ah, you yeah. know, run around with their heads cut off. I and think in the worst case scenario, mm-hmm. you didn't have that time, then right. I guess you didn't. So anyway, you just got to pick the the location, and with all the attributes we talked about, then you've got to buy the property the correct way. The last thing you want is that community to, to think some city guy bought this land, and we've never met him, and all of a sudden he could be a threat. Because, you know, city people have guns, and um, – um, and um, I mean, everyone knows they have guns, but mountain folk – they have guns too. Yeah. And so you just don't want to get in the predicament of people being unsure about you. Right. So you got to get numb. So, hey, good time for – we're going to start my next segment for some other options All if right. you don't buy land. So, But we're going to take a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back after these messages. You're listening to The Prepping Academy. The information you need before the world ends. Hi, I'm Joe Alton, MD, also known as Dr. Bones of the award-winning survival medicine website, doomandbloom.net, and co-author of the bestseller, The Survival Medicine Handbook. As a medical doctor, I know how important it is to have knowledge, but you'll need supplies if you're going to save lives in a disaster. We've got an entire line of medical kits for every homestead, retreat, workplace, vehicle, church, school, just about any purpose you might imagine, and they're all put together by a real MD and nurse practitioner. Other kits are fine when the ambulance is on the way, but when you're the end of the line with regards to your family's well-being, you'll be a more effective medical asset with kits and supplies uniquely designed for tough times and packed in the USA. Prepare your family for any disaster with medical kits and supplies at store.doomandbloom.net. That's store.doomandbloom.net. Make medical kits by Dr. Bones and Nurse Amy a part of your medical storage. Do you have the ultimate wood-burning collapsible survival and camping stove? Stop looking. The Under 6 Elite Survival Stove by survivalstoveworks.com can cook a meal in under 6 minutes with just a few twigs and sticks and without all the smoke and black soot. The Under 6 Elite weighs under 6 pounds and can be assembled in under 1 minute. This survival stove is made in the USA by patriots and preppers like you with high-quality steel. The Under 6 Elite Stove with all the extras is also easy to store and transport in its own carrying case. It's on sale now with free shipping. See it in action and get yours now at survivalstoveworks.com. That's survivalstoveworks.com. Thanks for joining the Prepping Academy, the information you need before the world ends. All right, welcome back. And we're here with Kendall Foot. Uh, Forrest is already bugged out. I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> I will keep the show going when you bug out. <laughs> Are you going to do your show when you bug out? Of course. Okay. It's going to be different, though. I'm yeah. going to broadcast it on FM radio. Oh. Mm-hmm. Good. Yes, you do. So the location mm-hmm. once once everybody dies and we get some stability, yeah. <laughs> then I will. <laughs> there you go. So we're talking about uh, bugging out, bug out locations, um, rather. Um, but what about those who are mobile bug out guys? I don't even know that, mm-hmm. if there's an actual name for it, but the the guys who are really got a lot of the bug out vehicles um, and, and stuff like that, they're bugging out on the go. They're bugging out a different way. They're going to be nomads, if you will. Right. They got, man, I've seen some RVs that are like crazy. Yeah. You out can vehicles. just go anywhere you want and just park that sucker. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I have a friend that's building a bus, kind of a, like a bug out bus. Yeah. With It's going to be like a tiny house, I guess, inside of a bus. It's yeah. pretty cool. I can't wait to. When she finishes, I want to see it. I mean, you know, it, it rocks. I mean, I, I mean, I like that idea. Um, the only thing that would keep that, uh, well, there, there are several problems, but the, the biggie would be the EMP. You know, is it, you know, EMP? Well, 
lot of people with these bug out vehicles, if you're going to do a bug out vehicle, you're going to do it in a vehicle that won't be affected by an EMP. Yeah, and, and a lot of these guys aren't, I don't think they're, I, mean, yeah, I could be wrong, I don't right. know uh, every one of them, but there's some of them that are not concerned about right. an EMP. That's not what they're bugging out for. Yeah. Or that's not what and I can for. understand why people don't prepare for that. I really can. That's the absolute worst case scenario, I think. Okay. Um. So, but with that, I mean, so if you have a nice RV, you can just go anywhere, Blue Ridge Parkway and pull off the side of the road. And, you know, it's going to be harder to defend and all your resources are in the camper or whatever. But, I mean, it's definitely an option. Yeah. I mean, with some of these RVs, it's not the cheapest option. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but um, it's definitely, so that brings, that brings me to, some other options that I wrote down the list and okay. campgrounds are definitely an option. They got a lot of the resources right there. They got water, you know, showers, sanitation. They're usually got ponds and streams by them. I mean, that is, I mean, that is an interesting concept where you go and take over a campground and allow people and build a community with the infrastructure they already have. All right. KOAs, y'all yeah. are in trouble. Or, <laughs> or camps, um, like where they do like um, missionary camps or school camps up in the mountains. They have these places that are just set up to bring in people like for retreats. Yeah, I did see on, uh, what was the prepping show that used to come on? Um, Doomsday Preppers. Doomsday Preppers. Mm-hmm. And they had some guys on there, and they had a Christian retreat, but yeah. not their whole thing. But they wanted to be a welcoming, prepping location. Yeah, they're they all going to die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, they did tear them up at the end. Oh, did they? Yeah. yeah with the ratings. But so camps, they have, they have bunks. They have still the infrastructure. They're usually kind of secluded where you can go and protect it as well. So another one is um, national parks and for, just a forest. You know, go out there. And, but I'm telling you, that's not the best option. The best option is not going out in the middle of the woods, putting up a tent. It's just, that's yeah. just hard. Some of the best survival people in the world on the show alone can't survive or stay out there more than, you know, 60, 70 days. That's hard. And how are you going to hide your food? I mean, you gonna hide, I mean, I guess you can dig it in the ground and hide it or something. But then comes up, because the area I'm from in the mountains, there's a ton of of mine shafts and caves. Now that's kind of an interesting concept. Yeah. Where you could actually be in a cave. Oh, what book did I just read? Oh, the days of Elijah, the three books. Awesome. Mark Goodwin there. They had a bug out location, but their they had a, their backup location was in a, um, from um, Elijah told him he knew of a cave and that's where they retreated to, and and it was awesome. Completely big old cave, had a water resource, everything inside the cave. And and I say that, I would say where I grew up, on the mountain I lived on, the one mountain, mm-hmm. there were 13 or 14 caves that you could actually go in and live in. Caves slash mining shafts. Mm-hmm. That they would mine a little bit and stop. Wow. So they're, I think they're probably peppered all over the mountains. Yeah. So. And, and there's there's risk, you know, and all that, and you got to take that in consideration. There's there's a show out right now where they're they're going through one end of like I've only watched one like, and there's, but they're going from one end of the cave to the other, and it's complete darkness. Ooh. And that's uh, not the kind of cave I want to be yeah, in. They have to, do it, they have to do it within so many days or, oh, whatever, really? or whatever. And I guess if they don't do it, they die. They die. <laughs> they come and rescue them or they, I don't know. Huh, like I haven't up, seen that. You know. But also, um, I got on my list abandoned buildings. Yeah. And there was a show a long time ago, a uh, long time ago called, I think it was called Colony, where they, it was a reality show. But they put all these people in an abandoned warehouse, and they protected it, and they kind of had a little survival group. And in the show, they had people come and, you know, 
trying to yeah, penetrate. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, I do, I do. It was a pretty cool show, but it was so far fetched, it was crazy. But it was I mean, so you could actually there are buildings that possibly are fortified fortified enough that you could kind of take over and and secure. Yeah. So that's a, another thought. You know, and, and some of these thoughts, some of these options, let's say you do have a bug, bug out location. You, I, now, for me, I would have a contingency plan. You know, that if this happens, then here's my plan. That if wife and family come, you'd go somewhere else. <laughs> <That's it. No. laughs> but but even, even if I get to my bug out location, and you it's got com- to. If, if it's compromised. Mm-hmm then you've got to have a contingency plan, and that's what I would do. And I love what uh, uh, Joe Face here in the uh, chat room, um, we know Joe, uh, put Mad Max. That is a great idea, dude. I never looked at that movie like that. Not because we were talking about Bug Out. Everyone gets shot in that movie. You, I mean, dude, everybody's getting shot on your show right now. You're talking about <laughs> moving to these places. That's a rough movie. Everybody, like, I know. You're going to move to the mountains. You're going to die. Shot. You're going to die. <laughs> oh, it's called The Colony. That was it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Discovery Channel, The Colony. I think that is right. Someone put it in the chat room. But, you know, I don't know. We could, or schools. I mean, you could go up to the, you know, yeah. Ashford area and take over a school, private school or something. Preferably when kids are not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> another another place uh, is family and friends. Yeah. You, I mean, it, your lake location may be compromised, but you may have family and friends up in you know the mountains of South Carolina or Georgia. Yeah, but I, I guess it depends because you know you and I are friends, but you're not going to let me come into your. <laughs> but I, I'll tell you this: I don't care who it is. If I show up with you know. A year's worth of food in a trailer and guns and ammo and craps hit the fan, you're going to welcome me into your house. Yeah, but you also want the skills. We always talk right. about skills. Skills got to have that. Skills are king. That, that, that's, a, that's a part of it. But, um, dude, I would, I would even do um, just having fun here with movies and stuff. Remember Zombie Land? No. And they go. I don't do zombies. <laughs> I know, I'm not saying zombies, but I just remember they, they took over like a, aliens. They they just over don't a theme exist. park. I would, okay. I would, my, if you're in Florida, Did they call go to Disney and let Epcot be your... Go to Disney and let that be your... Yes. Yeah. That's going to be like hunting grounds, man. <laughs> it's going to be hunting grounds for people oh, going in there. Man. But it would be the best bug out location. I think they have an underground city, though. In they Disney. do. Yeah. And I've been there because I worked. There. You were Mickey? Yeah. <laughs> or <Yeah>. Minnie. <laughs> or once um, you're Minnie or Mickey, you can never disclose it. Is that it? No, I, 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 I sold popsicles. No. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, but you know, well, there's, there's really no underground bunkers anymore. They're all probably taken in America. All the missile silo places. Yeah. Okay, we're uh, we are getting down, and so I'm going to share, I think, a genius idea. So let's say oh boy. the crap hits the fan, or you think it's getting ready to hit the fan, or the market has like one day gone down twenty percent, and it's on its way down. It's it's down sixty seventy percent right now, or you know that. Um, Something's going on, and you are just need to do something. Here's a suggestion. I am not saying I would ever do this, but it is just a suggestion. I'm not telling you to do this. It's just to get your mind thinking. I take no responsibility if people actually do some of this. Plain and simple. This is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> but there's a website called VRBO, VRBO.com, and it's vacation rentals. <laughs> you can go live right now on the Internet, and you can look at all these vacation homes in, in the, all over the United States, and you can tell if someone's staying there tonight or not. If they're not, you can rent it, okay? So you can go, ooh, you know, some sitting in the fan, let's, let's rent a house. So legitimately go on VRBO, find a vacation house, 
Go through the paperwork. Go ahead and be honest as you can. I want to rent this house for a week. Hit your deposit. Send them the money. And you go and you make that your bug out location. If the crap hits the fan after seven days or ten days and you're past your welcome, you know, I'm not sure the homeowner will have a problem you staying there protecting their house. Because I'm sure they're in Florida, wherever they are, and if they come and they go, this is my house, what are you doing in my house? Well, we're the people that rented it. We do have food for you. You're going to survive because of us. Can we stay? There's a partnership that can happen there. Um, and you can look every single day and see who's if there's someone in that house or if that house is available. Do your research. That's the house we want. Oh, man, someone's staying there on true vacation. And then you find another one. You put your money down. If the crap doesn't hit the fan, you know, pack your things up, leave, you know, clean the place. If you stayed extra days, you pay them. Right. That is a way to get away from population and into safety. Because yeah. a lot of these vacation homes are in little places hidden in the mountains or on the coast in little weird areas. So you could even do that now and every, make that a part of your, your practicing yes. and everything like that. Already get to know that community and everything as well. Yeah. At the same time. Yep. So you could rent a place four times a year, just a few nights, go up there and meet people, scout the place, and 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 be ready. Maybe even uh, we got two minutes left. G Man is, is telling us maybe um rent a uh a storage shed up there and put your your you know your goods in there or something like that and you can have it all up there. I mean that's a good I mean I think that's a legitimate and you can be honest about it too. Yes. Now if the crap hits the fan, you know, when they come, hey, we stayed a month in your house, sorry, here's some food. Oh wow, you got food? Yeah. See how it can help both people? Right. And, but you you got to be prepared. That if you can't do it by the website, then you've got to be able to call or whatever. But, again, that website, because I think there was some misunderstanding yeah. there, is V as in Victor. Yeah, V is. R, B, O. Yes. R is in Romeo, B is in Bravo, yep. O is in Oscar. Yep. So we got one minute left. Hey, this is the Prepping Academy. We're live every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on PrepperBroadcasting.com. Um, you can listen to us by a podcast. Um, you can go to Prepping Academy. That's the name of the show, Prepping Academy. We have all the information there. Subscribe. Give us some thumbs up. Like us. Send us a message. Send us 100 bucks. Whatever you feels. I mean, whatever you're moved to do. <laughs> <laughs> we hope this information was helpful tonight. I think it was good information. Oh, yeah. And I think that I brought a lot to the table tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Again, yeah. it's PreppingAcademy.com. Yeah, PreppingAcademy.com. Again, live on Monday nights on PrepperBroadcasting.com. Friday night. I mean, not Friday night. Monday nights. Monday nights. 9 p.m. Eastern Standard. We do this live. This is live. That's it. This is real world stuff. Unless you're listening to this non-live. Yeah. Okay. We will um, <laughs> We'll catch you on the podcast or next week, next Monday night. All right, guys. Hey, See take ya. care. See you. Thanks for listening to the Prepping Academy podcast. Preppers unite at www.preppingacademy.com. Today's broadcast has come to you through the courtesy of the Prepper Broadcasting Network. See our hosts, show schedules, archive programs, and more at PrepperBroadcasting.com. Thanks for listening. Has your data been hacked? 
Do you feel uneasy about the vulnerability of your personal information online? Were you involved in the Target, LinkedIn, or Microsoft data leaks? Don't know? If not, then pay attention. Join Forrest Garvin from PrepperNet for a free webinar on privacy and security. Gain insights into safe internet browsing, VPNs, crafting online aliases, secure emails, detecting if your data has been hacked, and managing passwords. Secure your spot today for this webinar on privacy and security. It's free. This webinar delves into comprehensive strategies for bolstering your online privacy. We've got you covered from fortifying your passwords to shielding your financial information and mastering state-of-the-art encryption techniques. We're offering two convenient dates to suit your schedule. Reserve your spot now at PrepperNet.com slash privacy. Don't let cyber threats erode your peace of mind any longer. Take the first step toward a safer, more secure online experience by joining us for our free webinar. Remember, knowledge is power when it comes to safeguarding your privacy. Sign up now at PrepperNet.com slash privacy. We'll see you there.